Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. Today we're gonna do some plant chores and I have filmed, I wanna say at least three videos of plant chores that you guys haven't seen because for some reason I am not, I just cannot film a video of plant chores. Like I, I just, I feel like I'm just so used to like really like planned out content with like B-roll and explaining things and teaching things and and so this video we're gonna do it i i if you guys do not see this video if this video does not see the day of light i'm going to cry because i really like doing plant chores and i like you know being able to share that side of the hobby and just share you know that experience with you guys i really like watching plant chores while i'm doing mine um and so being able to provide that content for you guys really just like makes me feel connected in some sort of way First thing on the roster is this plant. I'm pretty sure this plant might have thrips, which kind of like irks me a little bit because one, I have never had thrips. And from what I've heard, I'm like deathly afraid of thrips because I just have understood what kind of a struggle they are. But it's on the older leaves. So like, I really haven't seen any damage on the newer leaves. So I don't know. I think I'm still gonna buy, um... actually, let me know what you guys use for thrips. I know some people use like castile soap. Maybe I'll just get that and then because I know castile soap is a good like well round thing to use for really anything. I don't want to get something that's just used for one specific pest when I can buy something that's sort of like a well round generalized thing for all plants or all pests I mean. But yeah this plant is reaching the top of its moss pole. I was honestly dreading this moment of having to extend this because I, I just don't know. It hasn't been drying out that fast. I will say that. So maybe I don't need to repot this into something else because I want to keep this sort of display. Um, if you are new to the channel, I actually made this pot myself with like some oven baked clay and then I just painted it with like acrylic and yeah, I actually made another one and I'm planning on doing another arrangement like this pretty soon. Yeah, I just really love this arrangement. I really love all the plants in here. I really like how they're all growing together in here. I feel like the reason that I haven't been able to film plant chores is because um, I, well, honestly, last week was just kind of a hectic week. And I think I, I think I tried to film maybe, no, I know I tried to film at least one plant chores last week and I just could not for the life of me do it, you guys. Like, I don't know what was going on. I don't. Last week was honestly just a really stressful week for me, so it was really difficult for me to just sit down, concentrate, and film a plant chores. And even now, I'm still kind of like on that wavelength of like stress and stuff, but yeah. Um, I don't know if I want to repot this or just like extend it. I wouldn't mind um, repotting this just so I can fix the um, moss pull a little bit. I don't like when my moss pulls do this like it starts out really wide and then it just like gets like slimmer and slimmer um as you go to like the top of the moss pole so maybe we will i'm just gonna take this out actually yeah let's let's do that um but the reason that i've been so stressed um or the reason that i was so stressed last week at least i'm actually starting um college or university in the fall which is like in a couple months which is kind of crazy um and so i've just been kind of preparing for that i have like uh calls that i need to be on and stuff like that um it's not online but like for orientation and stuff and so yeah i i actually feel so dumb because i thought that it was i thought that my call was this like today this the day that i'm filming this i thought that it was this monday turns out it's next week and i was literally stressing for no reason Oh my god, and it honestly, like, it it really irritates me that I do that because it's not the first time I've done that. I always get ahead of myself and I get the date wrong. Like, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is, but I always do that. And so, yeah, that's, that's one big reason why I've been stressed. In general, I've just been stressed over that situation, um, especially with, like, my plants and, ooh. Not that like my plants are that big of a priority because definitely the priority right now is just like my mental health. Uh, when it comes to college, I don't want to say that it's going to be like a hectic time because I don't know what to expect, honestly. And that's kind of just what scares me is like, I don't know if I'm going to have time to take care of my plants. Am I going to have time to, you know, do my hobbies as I did before? I don't know what that entails. And if you are going to university while like working or, you know, any of that and you have any advice or tips please let me know because i just 
I definitely tend to overthink. I am the type of person that like, when we make plans, I need to know what time we're leaving. I need to know what time I need to be ready at. I need to know all of the details. And so like, also with that being an overthinker, like I definitely tend to overthink a lot of situations. And so this could definitely be one of those cases where I'm just kind of like overthinking it. Um, it's just like a big change. I also, another thing about me is I really don't do well with change. Um, yeah, I, when I got these new glasses, actually, I like hated them. I was like thinking about calling, uh, the, why was I about to say orthodontist? <laughs> the optometrist? I think that's what they're called. Don't know. The, the eye doctor. I was going to call them and be like, Hey, I don't like these glasses. Can I get some new ones? But like, I, I really, I just do not like change. Like when I mean, there's like so many stories, um, when I was in middle school, I literally went to like, my district had four middle schools. I went to three of those three. Yeah. I went to three of those. And so it's, it's like, I've always been like put in uncomfortable situations and I just don't, don't appreciate it. I don't like it. Um, and so man, what do I want to do? Right, I was gonna extend this. I have some old like um, acetate pieces here. All of these are taller. I think I might go with this one just because it is um, a little bit taller, which makes it better for not having to extend it so frequently. Honestly, I feel like a lot of people have just been kind of scaring me with it. Like the eye doctor I went to, um, I was telling them that like I'm gonna be going to university and and he was like just enjoy the summer while you can and i was like oh god i don't i don't need to hear that you know but anyways but yeah back to the main topic of the freaking thing i was talking about i was just really stressed last week and yeah so hopefully <laughs> this video <laughs> comes together i feel like i'm already like oh my god oh man also content wise i don't know how that is going to be either so if you know in the fall i don't have as many uploads out please just be patient with me i promise you i'm trying because i i feel like it's only going to be stressful like truly stressful when it comes down to like finals and like stuff like that um and especially since i'm going to be commuting to my college every morning it's just gonna suck it's like i think it's like an hour away on a good day maybe i don't know I don't know. I definitely didn't feel comfortable having a dorm. Um, and I, I probably could have, if I'm being honest, like I probably could have decided with that, but I just don't, I don't know. I just didn't really want to. I don't, when I was little, I literally shared my room all the time. This is the only time I've actually had my own space to like be myself and just have my own space and so like ha going from this back to sharing a room i don't know i don't know how comfortable i feel with that and again the whole like change thing also the last time i repotted this i off centered it so the eyeball was like to the side of the uh moss pole so now i'm like really making sure to get this right and this is in my sphagnum mix um i was thinking about moving it out into like pawn but I don't know. It seems to be like in this Spagnomix, so I might just leave it in this. It's been growing okay. Like, it's not really fussed at all. So, we're just gonna leave it for now, I guess. Oh my god, my mess is already- my mess? My desk is already a mess, and I was hoping to not make a mess, but, um... Okay, I'm just gonna take this one off. Which, honestly, I knew that this one wasn't gonna last that long because of, you know the size of it this thing i'm hoping that with the moss pole if you guys didn't know actually i'm gonna backtrack a little bit um moss poles are an extension of your pot which is one reason why i like them at least these moss poles i wouldn't say the like coco core ones are i i'm sorry but i don't like those i don't think i've ever liked them yeah i really enjoy these types of moss poles because one you don't really it eases propagation because it the plant is already going to be growing roots into this uh, moss pole as it grows up it so it's a lot easier to propagate off of it um, and then also just like the whole extension of your pot 
it's just kind of like upsizing your plant i guess i would say like it's just like adding more room into your pot i guess but again just like vertically if that makes sense and so i'm hoping that with this extension it won't need to get into a bigger pot because it'll just you know have that space up in the moss pole also with the winter coming up it's actually i usually try and do like my more like teachy stuff not necessarily teaching because i'm not like i'm not a botanist i don't like i'm not certified in horticulture or anything by any means so i just don't ever truly feel comfortable teaching but i know that my experience can be valuable to you know other people in the hobby and so i i don't know i always felt weird about that but last winter i did a thing like that like i did a uh, houseplant guide series which please i'm probably going to delete those because i just did not looking back i really wish i didn't do that because i just didn't feel completely confident in what i was teaching and so it just kind of felt and i know i can, you guys could probably feel it through the video now though i feel a lot more confident in what i'm teaching and like just i feel like i have the experience to back up what i'm saying as well so it feels a lot better um than when i was doing it back then and so i'm kind of thinking of doing that same houseplant guide series but i think this time i would go more in depth um especially with my experience at the houseplant store i definitely have learned quite a bit if i'm being honest like i i've actually like we actually like teach stuff there so it definitely gives me a lot more confidence to teach it as well but um oh man i think i need a stick give me one second yeah so at the store we do teach people a lot more about plants especially since we have a lot of beginners in the uh store like a lot of people will be like oh yeah this is my first plant or you know and so i feel a lot more confident in teaching stuff like that i guess and so i feel like redoing the houseplant guide series would be a good idea but i don't know let me know how you guys would feel about it i feel like since i i you know have started this channel i've just gained a lot more confidence in general with like speaking and like being myself on this channel and um again just a lot more comfortable with the hobby itself so i feel like it'd be a good idea but i don't know if it'd be like too repetitive i don't know let me know how you feel about it down below um or you know if i could maybe i should do just like an updated version but i don't know i honestly have thought about deleting those videos so many times like all of my old videos you guys and i just i kind of refrain from doing it um i don't know why i just don't i don't know i don't know when I was a beginner in this freaking hobby, you guys, I don't, I honestly barely remember it, to be honest, just because it was, like, such a, like, slow process, I guess, is the way that I would say it. Oh my god. Just perfect timing. Bro, can someone turn it off? Thank you. Um, it's like they heard me uh so when i first started i actually i actually discovered plants through so my brother's girlfriend got my mama plant and it was like from a certain plant store and i saw the name and like i don't know why i just like saw the plant and i was like oh like i i should i should get some for my room like it'd be it'd be really nice to have my own plants and then i saw like the name tag of like the store or whatever and then I was like, oh, and I searched it up and it was like pretty close, like in my area. So I was just like, like, oh, like I, I should go, you know, see this. And so I went to that store and that's where I sort of got my first plant. Um, and it was a Monstera, of course. And funny enough, I actually now work at that plant store. So it's like a whole like 360, you know, for full circle moment. Um, but yeah that's that's the first you know side i've ever seen of a plant and with that plant i believe i did over pot that plant and i potted it in a plant with no drainage the soil had like no aeration i think i was using like miracle grow of course um which you know it is what it is but um not that i'm like against it or anything i just personally wouldn't use it or buy it again uh just because i've kind of learned 
again from that experience but yeah so after actually i think i got two plants um i think i got a monstera and then an aglonema yeah and then i got a like golden pothos from like a store like a i think i got a, like a qfc or something like that after that i kind of just got hooked and then I just slowly started getting into plants. I don't even know how I like started learning about them. I think while, or Benji plant was actually one of the first people that I like really started like binging. Um, and if you guys don't know who he is, go follow him. And so yeah, after that, it's kind of honestly, like I'm not even joking when I say it's kind of a blur. Like, like I don't really remember what happened after that. Like I just remember getting really into plants. Um, and some mistakes that I would say I made when I first started was like, again, I don't think I ever truly like made the mistake of like up potting my plants. I did just with like that one plant that was my mom's. Um, I up potted it into again, a soil that wasn't that great. And if you didn't know, up potting your plants can be bad um, if you don't have the right conditions for it. So in general, as a beginner, you don't want to up pot your plants because it's, you're, it's just not a good idea. I wouldn't say to like do it right off the bat because again, you just really have to understand your conditions to really gauge if you like if your conditions will allow you to even, you know, give the roots that much space. But the plant has its roots. And so when you put a plant with small roots in a big giant vessel, like let's say I were, I don't know, let's say I were to put this tiny little cutting in this big pot full of soil that has no aeration, has no perlite, has no sand, has no like grittiness in there or aeration, that plant doesn't have enough root mass to fully absorb all of that moisture that's being left in there, especially with this that has no drainage. Not that, again, no drainage isn't a negative thing, but when it comes to not completely understanding what your plants need or what they like or what they you know, need to really grow, not that I completely understand it because I'm definitely still learning there with you guys, so um but putting it in something like this just has too much um water retention for the plant itself and those roots it doesn't again it just it just doesn't have the root mass to absorb all of that water you're just going to be left with rotted roots um just probably some stem rot in there like just really bad situation um some people can get away with um over potting the one thing with over potting and again i just wouldn't suggest this as a beginner but when you overpot something, like let's say, again, this isn't really a good example because I would never do this. I would never put this small of a cutting in this big of a pot. I don't know. Let's say I wanted to pot this El Troco in here. I'll actually show you guys the roots because I was going to do this anyway. But this El Troco doesn't have that many roots. And I'll show it to you guys. Again, it doesn't have that many roots. It doesn't have too many um secondary roots either to really absorb all of this i mean it does have some but definitely not to the point where i would feel comfortable potting it in with this it, to me it would probably say that it's like a two inch uh pot because of how many roots i'm seeing and so if i tried to pop this in a pot around this size like this tall this wide and filled it up with my potting soil i wouldn't completely saturate that soil i would honestly probably put like Oof, I don't even know my measurements, honestly, but I just wouldn't water it like I would if it were completely filled up in that vessel. And so that's why I'm actually leaving it in water because I want it to sort of get some more roots on there. And a quick little update as well. This thing, again, as you guys saw, has been rooting up amazingly. I would say just try and stick to that rule of like not giving a plant a bigger pot than the root mass. Um, I don't even think I've ever done that yet. Like I don't think I've ever potted up into a bigger pot in that way unless i'm like propagating or something and like just keeping the substrate moist enough for the plant to throw out those roots oh watering as well i also wrote this down watering was a big thing for me you guys i in fact when i first started i would honestly just neglect my plants um and looking back i i i think i said i overwatered a lot when i first started but honestly i feel like it was a combination of both overwatering and underwatering is are just as detrimental to your plant i think that my watering when i first started was definitely a combination of both and you guys every time i say combination it reminds me of the freaking central c and drake thing i don't know if you guys have seen that on tiktok every time i say combination it just reminds me of drake saying it in like a jamaican accent 
and it just makes me want to say it that way. So when I first started, I um, I worked at a job that um, was 40 hours. I would get home. Well, actually, I feel like I can talk about it a little bit more. I worked at a science lab and uh, but yeah, I was in husbandry. And so, you know, my like role there was to wash animal cages and just kind of like clean them out and make sure they're like prepped and ready to be used again. Um, and you guys, those cages were like freaking heavy, okay? They were heavy and it was just like a big labor intensive job. And so I would get home and I would be freaking exhausted. Like I, I wouldn't even know what to do with myself. I remember so many times that I literally, there was one time I actually, um, I like laid down in front of my heater because it was like during winter too So I would get home and it would be freaking cold as heck I would just lay right in front of my heater just like all cuddled up and I think one time I actually even fell asleep Right in front of my heater and then there was like I, You guys get the point. I would literally just come home exhausted And so I didn't even have the mental capacity for plants I don't even know how the heck I did that if I'm being honest Again, I, I feel like I would just neglect my plants and just not really pay that much attention to them because I would just come home and be completely exerted and just like not have the mental capacity to really give, can you guys even see what I'm doing? And not really give any attention to my plants. So now that I am not working that job, I, I honestly feel so much more happier. That job was definitely a whole other experience compared to like any of my other jobs. Um, and I'm glad I took that job just because I did learn a lot from that. I don't, and I know a lot of you can probably relate to this, like working 40 hour shifts. And I, I don't even know how the heck you guys do it because I just could not mentally have that availability for anything else, but you know, just like relaxing after work. And I just don't even know how the heck I did it. I really don't. I will say I just really appreciated my days off and like really did not take those for granted. And yeah, so I wouldn't have watering days. I would literally just have days where I'm like, oh my God, did I water this plant? Like, and I only had like three plants, so it wasn't like too overwhelming, but you know, again, just easing into that hobby. It just kind of, it still takes a certain amount of energy to really like want to take care of your plants you know yeah i i i think that looking back it was a combination of both underwatering and overwatering um i would say it was probably like i would forget to water and then i'd you know drown it and then some of those roots would be rotted and then it would just kind of continue off of that cycle and just continue rotting i'm glad that i can kind of look back and take an understanding from what happened with that you know part of my experience and also i've noticed that with this uh upper pernum elbow if i am not like on top of adjusting this or on top of like extending this I, this thing reverts so quickly and i don't i don't even understand how if i'm like like with this one right now i can already kind of see that it reverted in size again just annoying because i was like oh my god here's the moss that i was looking for i was like you know even if the moss is just like slightly off or it doesn't feel enough humidity at the top it's kind of just like okay i'm going back um so i think to get the fenestrations on this and you guys i was so excited i thought i got fenestrations on this pretty sure it's just damage so another thing with the watering is watering days I am not the type of person that's like, oh, I'm gonna water, you know, I have my watering day on Fridays. I just sort of have like moments throughout the week well, where, what? <laughs> where I'll kind of like just walk around my collection, you know, if I notice one plant needs water, I'll just be like, okay, I'm gonna, you know, set aside this time to really check out my collection, see what else needs water. It's not that I'm like, oh yeah, I'm like gonna water all my plants this day. And don't even like you guys i don't even understand how there's some people who keep their collections alive where they're like i'm what i water every three days please tell me how you do it because i i can't i can't even get away with like slightly you know overwatering one thing or else it'll just like go kaput because it's just like not happy I will say that I do kind of notice my collection tends to dry out towards the end of the week um, just because that's sort of how I've always like watered my plants I guess like I guess it's always been towards the end of the week so most of my plants will be more dry towards the ends of towards the end of the week and like the beginning of the week so like 
Thursday I will check most of my plants Friday I work so I don't really do anything to my plants and then Saturdays Saturdays a lot of stuff will also be dry that you know wasn't dry on Thursday Sunday I'm probably just like finishing up watering here and there um, so yeah towards like that end or beginning part of the week maybe even sometimes on Mondays but again I just don't I'm not like purposely or like intentionally making a schedule for my plants or like my watering it's just kind of observing when most of my plants get dry and then just taking it from there oh god another thing that took me it didn't take me a long time but i i definitely learned throughout this whole experience propagating um so if you didn't know i imported two plants almost a month ago now or a month what almost a year ago now and um yeah it was like in around August and I learned a lot from this and I'm eternally grateful for my first El Choco which was in that video actually and I struggled so freaking hard to reroot that plant I, looking back I feel like I should have um like when you receive an import that isn't like up to standard or is like almost dying you can you know get back to Equigenera or wherever you got that plant from and they'll sort of like reimburse you or they'll send you another one whatever it may be and I feel like looking back at that video all of the leaves on the El Choco were dying all of the it had like zero roots like I was literally just having to like reroot it looking back I feel like I should have you know contacted them because it definitely wasn't and I feel like I didn't start out as an import it literally just started out as a rerouting process and so yeah but again that's just like mistakes and things that I've learned um and just another thing that I can add you know to my knowledge but yeah so around that time I actually had just gotten a grow light which is actually can you guys even see it not this shelf right here but the one above this shelf I have an Ikea grow light it's not a grow light i hate that i say that but it's a light that i use for my plants it's literally just like a desk lamp during this time it was also transitioning from summer into winter right yeah summer into winter you know it was the only really source of light that i had and so um a lot of my plants were under this setup or under this light and this light I think it's only like seven watts if I can find the actual like information on that light I will pop it in but I'm pretty sure from the last time that I checked it was only like seven watts and so if you know grow lights you know that that is definitely not enough to supply energy for your plants and so I'm over here you know thinking that you know I have a really high light situation that all my plants are gonna thrive that they're gonna survive past the winter heck to the no trust me heck to the freaking no because um all my i think i was still like taking propagations during um winter i just had like full confidence in a light that you know clearly isn't going to supply a lot for my plants and like now looking back again just another thing that i can add to my knowledge but so i have this reverted strawberry shake that i got from a friend in like december so like a you know pretty hefty bit of time and i noticed honestly rewind i kind of tend to just like ignore this like i don't even really water it um i'll just water it if i have like leftover water to be used on like other plants and stuff um which i don't feel the need to water this as much anyways because it's in a corner that doesn't really get that much light and with the darker foliage i feel like i can kind of handle that recently i noticed some rotting roots again not all of them are rotted but definitely there is some little bits here and there that are rotted and so i'm kind of conflicted on whether to repot this i was planning on doing it but i'm thinking that i might just leave it alone because one it's not in that much light so it's not gonna have time to recover before uh we go into winter it has like a month or two maybe to like really get adjusted in here and so i don't think i'm going to repot this one um just because of the conditions that it's in i feel like it would be best not to again it's not really getting that much light i don't think this gets like direct sunlight whatsoever it's literally like my east facing window is right here and it's like over here in this corner and so um i just think i'm gonna leave this one alone for now i don't want to put that plant into shock and i feel like that is one plant that will be put into shock because it doesn't have the conditions to fully bounce back in time okay so next we're gonna do 
this one this is my brazilian rain tree i've talked about this one multiple times it's a plant that's used for bonsai and i did you know repot it into a bonsai pot but i've actually decided i think i'm gonna propagate this and do bonsai on that one because i do want to just kind of let this one go crazy like i don't i want to have one that i can just like watch its growth really enjoy its growth and another one that i can you know practice bonsai on because i'm not a bonsai expert by any means i literally have done like minimal research i like barely know anything yeah we're gonna repot this back into no drainage so i can enjoy the growth not that i'm not enjoying it in here but i'm i am planning on using this bonsai pot for actually we could just leave it in here if i'm being honest maybe i will maybe i will leave it in here just for now until that propagation is ready so we're really just gonna propagate this Ooh, okay i think i found the one I'm, that i'm gonna chop um but yeah as i was saying with the whole propagation stuff um so i got that old choco and real quick before we get back into that conversation um i did when i i've actually already propagated this that's why i kind of feel a lot more comfortable with it and when i did those propagations i actually used aloe vera on the stem because it is a more like um hardwood sort of plant i did like i actually wanted to use like rooting hormone but the only like real rooting hormone i have is in here and it's mixed with like cinnamon and like charcoal and stuff like that so i didn't really want to just use this so i'm also going to be using aloe did i already say this aloe is a natural rooting hormone so it'll really help to like get this plant to like root up and so i am going to use this i really only hmm, where did, what did i do last time i guess i'll just put like a dollop here and yeah, I literally just had this lying around because I use it on my face. Again, I'm trying to look for something that's a little bit bigger. Okay, I chopped it. And now let's see it. Ooh. Oh my god. I really like the smell of this plant when you chop it. It smells like really like nutty and like oaky and like... Oh my god. I, I, I freaking love it, honestly. Um, so yeah, this is the little cutting. It looks so cute. The leaves are gonna start to close because I just chopped it, but, um, yeah, it's so freaking cute. Oh, man. All right, well, that one was a lot easier. After I got that import, I, you know, had to reroute the El Troco, and so I had that light at the top of my setup, and it was, like, shining down on my desk. I had that propagation all the way on my desk. Like, I didn't have it anywhere near the grow light. And with that grow light being seven watts, again, it was just like, again, it was just like way too much or way too little light, I should say. I don't know what the heck I was trying to say. With that situation, my El Choco was definitely not getting enough light to like truly um, grow any roots. And so now I'm grateful for that experience. But looking back, there was definitely some things that, you know, I needed to take from that because that El Choco was definitely not ready for anything and it, it definitely wasn't getting enough light to, to you know fully grow roots out and so this El Choco I did end up buying another one and this is that one now you guys El Choco's I've heard this from at least two other people El Choco's uh, mature really really easily like I promise you it is literally the easiest plant to get to mature from like sheath to catafil and so if you guys are wanting a plant that's really like rewarding to grow i will say that it i, I don't want to say that it's difficult to propagate because my first experience again i just didn't have the knowledge to fully make that happen but with this you know with my second time around rerouting this i can tell you i have had nothing but success i have it underneath my barina grow lights and it is just growing these amazing roots you guys like truly truly amazing and before um when it didn't have roots the leaves felt really like rubbery and like sticky and like i just don't know how to explain it like just they would kind of like grip you and you could tell that it was kind of like struggling with holding its water but now it's literally just like back to a regular el choco leaf and i freaking love it so so much when you're propagating give your plants a lot of light and I, d I don't mean like stick it right underneath the grow light because you could definitely burn that leaf still and it might cause more damage than good but give your propagations more light so that they have that energy to root up for you because that's definitely one thing that i struggled with that plant is i was not giving it enough light and i was still expecting it. i was still expecting it to give me 
a good amount of roots which is kind of just like unfair to the plant because I, I just wasn't giving it an environment where it could thrive let's do my Jose Bono this plant I have been struggling with the roots on it for a while and so what I'm thinking of doing is actually just like growing it on a pole like I don't even want to like have to have it in here I think I'm literally just going to strap it to a pole and hang it somewhere I'm actually thinking I'm gonna hang it on this shelf I am receiving a new uh, grow light situation for this shelf so I I'm gonna have the ability to move a lot more plants onto this shelf which just like makes me so happy and it was honestly like perfect timing as well because I was literally about to buy new grow lights so that I could fix up that situation a little bit more but yeah there will be an update when that happens well one this does need an extension so this is probably gonna go on this other um acetate piece for the uh moss pole why am i blinking on all of these words um and yeah so i'm just kind of done like with struggling to root it at the bottom it does have some really really amazing roots in this moss pole so i'm like why not just pot it up onto a moss pole and have no pot down below so yeah i do want to do that let's let me get this out i don't even know how this is gonna work and i feel like this uh pole might even be too small like i mean like um not like as in length as in like width it might be too small so maybe we'll actually do this old one that i had in the um plant arrangement i mean it does have roots and they're not like bad or anything like they're not rotted maybe we'll just tuck them into the um moss so i'm kind of done with like rerooting this plant and like having to deal with the rot on it not that it's a really rotty plant, but I just feel like it hasn't had the best time adjusting to its conditions and like its rooting medium. So, I mean, there is new root growth. And this is a plant that I've honestly contemplated putting on my uh, piece of cork board that I have. But I, I just don't know why I haven't, honestly. I just, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like it's hard for me to like want to put any like climbers like this on a piece of cork board like that because i just don't understand how i would extend it like at some point it would you know run out of space to go upwards and then i'd just have to put it back in a pot so i'm kind of thinking of using like a um micans or something like that for that situation also recently you guys i have been dealing with a lot of plants that kind of look sickly like i've had at least two situations with like edema um i can't remember the other plant though maybe it's only that calathea but my calathea had like this edema stuff going on um and then my politiflorum is also starting to like oh right three so my politiflorum has like this yellowy tinge in the leaves and I, i'm not sure what it is honestly i with that plant in general i've had some really fast like leaf turnover which i'm not used to um usually my plant will keep its leaves for you know a pretty substantial amount of time um but with that plant specifically i just haven't had success with it and so at first i thought it was um oh four plants what am i saying my clathia my Frydeck, my politiflorum and then my stefania suberosa with my stefania i think it might just be um bleaching like light bleaching from my east facing window because it does get some pretty in or it gets some pretty direct light in the morning um especially if like it's really hot and the sun's out all day um it definitely gets hit a little bit with some light and so oh right okay and so i wouldn't be surprised if that's what was going on with that one but i have been getting some plants that do look like they're getting edema or like they have some nutrient deficiency um and i feel like it could be that i'm over fertilizing um usually i try to do half strength of my fertilizers but recently i've kind of, i feel like i've kind of forgotten to do that and i've just kind of gone by what's on the label um because i started doing my watering from like a gallon like i'll fill up i'll fill up this whole thing um with water and it's like a gallon of water you know and so recently i've had to dilute it into that and that compared to my previous like watering situation um is a lot bigger and just a lot more 
a lot more measurements that I have to sort of figure out. And yeah, and so I'm pretty, I don't wanna say I'm pretty sure, but it's it's a thing that I've been thinking about, which like overwatering, I've definitely been kind of like, did I overwater that because, or not overwater, what? Over fertilize. Um, and so I think that for the time being, I might just hold back on watering or fertilizing. What is up with me saying watering? Um, because I don't want to risk over fertilizing. And I know that that can be pretty heavy for a plant to deal with, especially with my plants in no drainage. I feel like that would just be a really bad thing to deal with. So I think that um, when you over fertilize, what I've heard to do, I've never done this, but just like what I've seen other people do and heard from is to stop fertilizing as a whole water with like i think it's like water with distilled water if you can or like ph balanced water uh like do that for a couple of waterings like maybe three or four waterings and then slowly reintroduce those nutrients back in but again you don't want to be too harsh with it like you really just want to slowly ease back into fertilizing and with the summer sort of coming to an end here pretty soon i think it might be a good time to do that usually i still try and fertilize throughout the winter especially with my plants underneath grow lights um this is actually going to be my first time with um grow lights in winter like actual like grow lights not just like a light um yeah so i think i'm gonna stop fertilizing for a little bit just to see how my plants react to it they're probably gonna slow down in growth but I'd rather deal with that than deal with um, over fertilizing because it's just not, it just makes your plants look really like sick and like something's wrong, which something is wrong because you're over fertilizing, you know, but I just kind of want to figure it out and hopefully that helps. Um, I know edema and over fertilizing and nutrient deficiencies kind of look really similar, so it's, it's going to be... It's gonna be a tricky like sort of like limit testing situation i guess um but yeah i i don't i don't know what else i could really tie it to it's not overwatering. it's not um i don't think it's nutrient deficiency because i've i've been you know fertilizing pretty well and so maybe even again fertilizing too much and so I'm just going to pull back a little bit. I don't even know what I'm going to do with that freaking jug of watering, like fertilizing stuff. I did already dilute it. Um, I actually like just filled it up with um, a little bit of water because it was like halfway full. And so I was like, okay, perfect time to like dilute this a little bit more. But yeah, if you guys have ever dealt with over fertilizing, let me know what you guys have done. I, I don't know really what to do in this situation because it's just kind of like I feel like I'm kind of playing a guessing game. Like, I don't really know if there's over fertilization. It's just kind of like there might be over fertilization. Right after I posted this video, I, um, in that video to begin with, I talked about, um, the Hoya like taco test thing and how I like don't really agree with it or how I don't really, you know, understand it or like, well, I understand it, but I just don't, yeah, so I don't really agree with it. And that same day, like that same filming day everything like literally the day that exact same day <laughs> what am i saying literally the day that i posted that video i went to go like check my hoya and i was like oh my god it's wrinkly and i was like wait what and then i realized i let it dry out to that point <laughs> so i kind of felt like a hypocrite but again i wasn't doing it on purpose i literally think i just like forgot to water it and it was like really hot that week too so it just was kind of like you know a really bad timing bad situation because it is, it is in a kokodama so it kind of has a lot of airflow going through it and so i was just literally like it just got underwatered that was it and it actually happened again after that and i was like okay i think i need to fix the kokodama a little bit um and add some more sphagnum which i already did i'm hoping that this goes good um and that it's not like too bust with not having a pot because let's, let's be honest you had like nothing in the pot so now you get no pot last week i was really stressed because i was like oh i have you know my call with my college and um you know i have to have certain things done by that time so that we can set up classes and things like that 
and so I was like really stressed I was really like focusing on getting all of it done and I didn't like I I'm gonna be honest I have really turned into a procrastinator lately and just like after high school I kind of just like started procrastinating a lot which I never really used to do it but you know recently it's kind of just been a thing that's happened so yeah I was just like doing a lot of the stuff last minute and then today I was like you know I woke up on time I was like okay I'm gonna get ready I'm gonna eat as I was eating I went on like the website and we had to join like the zoom call or whatever and as I was eating I was like why isn't this you know why is not the zoom call appearing or like the ID or whatever that you have to put in to join the call oh and I ended up having to call like the school or whatever and I was like why isn't this showing up for me like I know it's you know supposed to be today or whatever and turns out that I was like literally you guys I'm so mad at myself for this not really like it's kind of a good thing and a bad thing but I got the dates wrong and it's next week so yeah I was literally stressing for no reason and now we're here so yeah okay so I finished this up I had to like tuck the sphagnum in the back of the moss pole because there was a gigantic like gap in between the actual like plant moss and then just like the acetate so yeah that was a whole other thing but i did finish this up and i even put the little thing that i'm gonna hang it off of this is just a safety clip that i like pierced into this but i freaking love this this is so freaking cute and i really oh my god i'm probably gonna have to extend this pretty soon as well but yeah this thing looks so cool and i did get this inspiration from sydney plant guy he actually did this with his el troco and yeah i'm really excited to watch this grow and just experience how this is gonna do in this situation and yeah i can't wait with all that being said that is all that i have for you guys today i did have some other plant chores but i'm kind of just like losing my social battery here and i don't want to just like continue on and have this just sort of be boring so i'm probably gonna end up doing those chores off camera and it's kind of just like the same old same old but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this let me know what plant chores you guys were doing while watching this or if you do your plant chores while watching plant chore videos uh because i know it helps me feel motivated to do my plant chores but yeah with all that being said thank you so much for watching and i truly hope you enjoyed